Welcome to Red Flags, the show where we reveal our contestants' biggest icks and oh no's. We're coming to you live from Heartbreak Cove and today we're going to pit two walking red flags against each other to see who's the catch of the day and which of these fish is better off left in the sea. But before we begin, let's get to know our judges and their own red flags. Megan O'Brien. Hello, Josh. My red flag is I enjoy anime unironically. <laughs> ben Hunter. Hi Josh. I used to be really passionate about killing whales for sport, but now, now it's just a job. <laughs> and Rachel Hornbuckle. I enjoy Peyton sips. <laughs> Yeesh, well, it sounds like we got the right people for the job. So throughout the night, we'll be taking our contestants through the course of an entire relationship and seeing who sinks and who swims. The contestant with the least amount of red flags at the end of the show will come away with this gnarly trophy. Ooh. And our loser, well, you have to answer to her. <laughs> Time to meet our contestants. Liam Maguire is a tech-savvy engineer, well-versed in the online world of crypto, Minecraft, and esports. He can't cook, but his mum certainly can. Meet Mia Childs. This binge-drinking, distrusting drama queen lives a glamorous life in Wagga Wagga, tending to her never-ending shoe collection. Join the two of them for your first day. Welcome to Heartbreak Cove, Red Flags. How do you feel? Oh, happy to be here. Yeah. I also sort of picked up on the way while I was walking through GP, so... Yeah, fair enough. We thought you'd be alright for the show. So, now it's time to move Right in to round one, the first date. Alrighty, contestants, here's your first question. So, you're on a first date at a bar, things are going super duper well, the drinks are flowing, conversations flowing, you're having a great time, but then, out of nowhere, your ex shows up and they sit next to you, they start ordering you drinks and flirting with you right in front of your new date. How do you respond? We'll start with you, Liam. Right, well, free drinks, come on. Um, you've seen the economy right now, everything's really expensive. So, you know, might as well stack it on, get some drinks out of the X. Mm, get the free drinks, all right. And Mia. You know what? I rejected the guy. He has the same birthday as me, so I owe him one. <laughs> right, okay, so what, give up the date and move on to the other guy? Look, no bad blood here. I want to date both of them. <laughs> All right, so... Queen. Literally queen. <laughs> take the drinks or take both of them. Judges, it's up to you to discuss which one of those raises the most alarm bells. So please, discuss. Start that clock. No, none of these. They're, they'd be good. No, no, no. Uh, Mia dates her own star sign and that is narcissistic, so... Literally, um, literally queen. <laughs> I like, I like Liam, I like the cut of his jib. Yeah. He's, it's a doggy dog world out there, but he's the feistiest pooch in the pound. Yeah, it's true. You're not wrong. Um, You're not wrong. Yeah, good Neither one there. You. Well, judges, <laughs> it's time for you to raise those flags. So please Whoa. tell us who was most problematic. One for Liam, one for Mia, and oh, last minute change, another one for Mia. Mia's on two red flags, Liam's on one. So stay tuned to find out what other red flags our contestants have. I'm sure there'll be a lot of them, so we'll be right back. Unilodge School Street Studios offers student accommodation right in the heart of Kelvin Grove's bustling urban village precinct. Unilodge School Street offers a residential life program that builds a sense of community through social events, activities and adventure. With no shared rooms or facilities, it is the perfect building for those who prefer their own private sanctuary. Want to live right near uni? Look no further than Unilove School Street Studios.
Welcome back to Red Flags. So, Mia's currently raising the most red flags on two, and Liam's maybe slightly less problematic on one red flag. So now, let's get right into the second round, the situationship. Alrighty, contestants, your next question. So, you actually managed to get a few more dates with this person. In fact, you're six weeks into dating. Wow. Perfect. <laughs> but now, you find out that your new almost partner, but you haven't made it official yet, needs a new roommate. They need someone to sign a six month lease. So how do you respond? We'll start with you, Mia. Well, as long as I can move out of New South Wales, I'll take anything. So why not? <laughs> Okay, and Liam. Josh, that's perfect. If I get her to move in, I can keep doing my study and working, and then she can just cook and clean. It's perfect. Oh. Woo. Oh <laughs> well, judges, I'm sure we've got a lot to talk about. We... Start that clock. <laughs> hey, I said oh, Liam's, think, got, Liam's got that dog in him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I yeah. think that she needs to get out of New South Wales now. Something's, something's stopping her. I can see her eyes. <laughs> Maybe it's Liam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. I think it's Liam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Judges, <laughs> three seconds. I'm sure it's a very <laughs> difficult yeah. decision, but uh, yeah, please raise Just those he, flags. He's a guy with traditional One values. For Liam. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you two for Liam and a surprising vote for Mia. You can't say bloody anything these days. <laughs> Yeesh. Well. Coming back, we'll see who manages to stay afloat as our contestants meet the parents. You don't want to miss it. Turn the page and discover new worlds. Life is all about experience. Don't get lost in the everyday. Rather, live a little. Cherish your loved ones. Get more out of life. Take a sip of life. Summer Hong Kong Milk Tea. It is really heating up here at Heartbreak Cove. So welcome back to Red Flags. And astonishingly, both of our contestants are both on the same amount of red flags. Three red flags each. So now it's time for the decider, the final round, meet the parents. Alrighty, contestants, so I want you to use your imaginations here and pretend that I am the dad of this person you've been dating. You've now made it past the situationship phase and you're actually together, so congratulations. Well done. Yes, well done. But you now have to meet your new partner's dad and that's me, so come on right up, Liam. G'day. Yeah. Yep, the correction is good. Look, How are you doing? Look, I, uh, I would have preferred a handshake, to be honest, son. I can uh, do it. Son? Oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> so quick. How'd you hear about the marriage? Oh. Just leave now. 
<laughs> Mia. Hello. Oh. Mm. Mm. Do you have hand sanitizer on you? A bit sweaty there. Yeah. Um. No, that was not the best handshake I've had. No. Possibly the worst. But look, Mia, mm. I hear you're a fair bit of an alcoholic from my mm. child. And look, I just want to know, I want to hear it from the source. Mm. Is this true? Well, let's just say, if it doesn't work out with your son, I hope you're single. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Are Jeez, right, judges. Josh? Oh, oh. My God. Are you good? It's heating up even more here at Heartbreak Cove, but judges, it is now time for you to discuss who had the worst introduction to the dad. So start that clock. What are these guys, butchers? The way they're meeting this guy. <laughs> oh my God. Look, what, what have I said about Liam yeah, from I'm day one? Yeah, I'm back to Liam. Woof, woof, there's that dog in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, dog oh, energy yeah. with the high oh, oh, oh. Five seconds left. <laughs> He does Bitcoin. He's definitely the worst player. No, no, no. And this, this is making decision, the woman judges. Wait, wait. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa! More last minute changes. Sorry. Sheesh. I'm falling. Sheesh. Wow. That is two red flags for Mia and one red flag for Liam. So we know what this means. Liam, you are our most concerning person here. What? what? So take him away. Oh. Oh, no. It's Wrong Mia. way around. What are you Mate. It is not. Wow, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my my red flag is that I can't do maths. So, oh gosh, oh, you funny boy. Yeah. <laughs> Please take our actual red flag away, lifeguards. Yeah. All right. Well, if it doesn't work out, like I said, I hope you're single. Um, I'm, I'm surprised you show, still okay? want to date me after that maths you just saw. But all right. Anyway. Congratulations, my friend. That Thank is... you very much, Josh. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Liam, you're the only person who can walk away from here and say you're not a red flag. And that includes me. I can't say I'm not a red flag either. So congratulations. Another round of applause for this incredible man. Thank you, Josh. Could I get back to class soon, so I'll see you later. I have no idea how he did it, but <laughs> that is it for this episode of Red Flags. <laughs> Thank you very much to our wonderful, wonderful judges, Ben Hunter, Rachel Hornbuckle, and Megan O'Brien. Oh, boy. <laughs> and remember, always swim away from those red flags. We'll see you next time. Don't you paddle. <laughs> Don't you paddle. <laughs> <laughs>A swell and mutant magpie murders coincides with swooping season. A new outbreak of knees and toes disease has emerged in the country, an alarmingly deadly strand of the head and shoulders variant. From the most trusted and only news station, this is Apocalypse Now. Good evening and welcome. I'm Chuck Newkman. And I'm Anita Sox. Our first story of the night, the mask mandate is back on, having once again been reinstated for the entire country. The provisional emergency government, now entering the 17th year of its two-year emergency term, has returned to the mandate after a cloud of black carbon blew in from the north. Residents are advised to stay inside, but if you do need to go out, remember to wear a mask and avoid breathing in any radioactive toxins. Reinstatement of the mandate has also sparked anger from notable anti-mask movement, the Anti-Radio Alarmist Society of the Enlightened, better known simply as ARS, who have taken to the street in protest of this decision. 
Many of these apostates claim that masks are an obstruction to their rights and ability to breathe. The leader of us, Nigel Trentworth, has been vocal, in particular about his beliefs in the exaggerated dangers of radiation. Apocalypse Now approached Nigel for comment, but we were informed that he is currently unavailable due to a stomach ache he states is definitely not related to radioactivity. Yes, our thoughts and prayers go out to Nigel and his arse. Now onto the weather. Today we have John Fawcett with the day's forecasts. How are you over there, John? Thanks for asking, Anita. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, my wife left me for a man with a bigger bunker. So, there's that. But let's have a look at this weather forecast, shall we? In the southeast, as you can see, we've got some carbon clouds coming in, followed by a meteor shower, falling harder than my tears last night into the photo album my ex-wife insisted we make. And as you can see in the north, we're experiencing a low-level solar flare of only 60 degrees, with a UV level of 16. So if your partner can still stand the sight of you, why not take him for a romantic getaway up in Darwin? But wait, there's more. Uh, towards the west, you're going to want to stock up on those lead umbrellas because we've got some acid rain coming in. Looks like a great day to pop on those hazmat suits and jump in the puddles with your kids. <laughs> Too bad some can't have any. <clears throat> and in the south, we have some normal, stable weather that is totally in control of its emotions. But stability is not for everyone. Some say it's too boring and stole the best years of her life. <laughs> Thank you. An insightful weather report as always, John. Now on to our top... Is it too much to ask? <laughs> John. Just to feel warm again. Uh, John. <laughs> I miss the sound of her singing voice. If I could turn back time. We're going to cut to a break. If I could Please don't go anywhere no or you way. might not make it back. <laughs> I take back those words that I... Why don't you leave it to the professionals? On Point Media Solutions, for all your printing, graphic design, and marketing needs. Welcome back to Apocalypse Now. Temperatures in regional Queensland are skyrocketing after a fissure in the earth has opened up all the way to the earth's core. Locals are baffled by the occurrence, but the incident has not come with that opportunity. Let's cross over live to our first correspondent, Janine Geiger, who's on location at the fissure. Janine, what can you tell us about what's been happening since the hole emerged? Initially, there was some concern about the hole when it first appeared, namely the immediate and spontaneous combustion of native flora and fauna. However, in the weeks that followed, the tide of public opinion has changed dramatically. What makes you say that? Well, Chuck, with immediate access to the Earth's crust, mining opportunities have greatly opened up, with a boost of available jobs in the region. Mining the fissure has been a welcome injection into the local economy. And is that all perfectly safe to do? That's right, Anita. Companies currently excavating the region have given their greatest assurances that everyone working the fissure is being provided the utmost protection needed to work in these conditions. They even claim that this alone will boost the economy to heights wastelanders have never seen. That's wonderful to hear, Janine. Looking forward to a brighter future. Are you buying this? Let's switch over now to our second reporter, Olivia Burns, who's reporting live from the fissure itself. Olivia, what can you tell us about conditions where you are?
Um, well, I'm being told we're going to a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our top story of the night. Peak performance, not a problem. BBC's service team is always looking forward to helping with solutions to your workplace. Not just a copier, a multi-functioning device that seamlessly integrates with your business platform for everyday use for everyday people. Visit our showroom today. BBC Digital, making work flow. Success is hard work. Every business aims to grow their company. I believe critical technologies are elemental to that growth. Cybersecurity is a critical technology that will no longer be optional in the future. We're at the forefront of that technological space. We're with clients who understand the need to future-proof their organization. We do this by elevating their productivity standards and securing their cyber environments so that they can function without fear of ransomware. We want to earn the right to partner with our clients. That's Mino IT. On to our top story now. Recent pressures mounting on the zombie population of Australia has seen much unrest and disruption coming from the horde in recent days. Many walking dead living on the east coast are expressing their resentment over the struggle to scrape by under rising costs of unliving. Many are now voicing their concerns for the future of undead residents, unable to cope with these changes. Joining us now in the studio is Ross Rotz, spokesperson and representative of the Undead Horde, expert on all things pertaining to have risen from the grave. Ross, thank you for your time today. <coughs> <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Yes, it's good to be here. Thanks for inviting me on tonight, Chunk. So, Ross, tell us, is there really a crisis happening amongst the zombies here in Australia? And if so, what's the issue? There sure is, Chunk. We're seeing the cost of unliving rise completely out of control. Prices for brains are rising exponentially, quickly becoming affordable to most good, honest, hard-working undead families. It's criminal, really. Zombies weren't meant to live under these kinds of pressures. Any idea what's causing these rising prices? I know exactly who's to blame for this, Anita. This new, young generation of wastelanders have a completely different attitude than the one that came before it, and it's having disastrous effects on our community. Right. Care to elaborate on that at all, Ross? See, it used to be, back when I was a mere shambler, that you'd never be hard-pressed to find good, solid wastelander brains to munch on. But nowadays... Nowadays, people just don't want to be eaten anymore. It's absurd. I mean, nowadays, zombies have to get by eating off the brains of dead humans. But it's just not the same. It's like asking you to drink expired milk. Well, Ross, can you blame people? I mean, don't you think it'd seem pretty obvious that people wouldn't want their brains to be eaten? You'd be surprised how few people use their brains these days, Chunk. Like you, for example. I bet I could crack open your skull right now and feast on everything that's inside and there'd still be some left over. Um, excuse me? Yeah. Yeah, you'd have some nice juicy brains, wouldn't you, Chunky? Um... Well, anyway, uh, that's all the time we have for this segment. Thank you, Ross, for stopping by. Thank you for watching the program. I'm Anita Socks. And I'm Chuck Newman. And this has been Apocalypse Now. You knocked all his teeth out. Now he's just gumming me. This is somehow worse. And how good was that? Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm your host, Lily, and this is The Green Room, the music show putting bands' knowledge, skills, and creativity to the ultimate test. Let's get into it.
Thank you all for joining us here in the green room. And what an opening. Tonight, we're joined by two of Brisbane's most exciting new indie acts. To my left, we have Telemona, whose most recent single 3AM has provided a new wave of psychedelic heartfelt tracks in the Aussie music scene. And to my right, we have Lounge, who are the next shamans of supersized melodies and have released three fresh tracks in 2022. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. Thanks. Thank you for having us. All right, without any further ado, it's time for tonight's first game, Words and Lyrics. The way this round works is I'll read aloud some popular lyrics and the first band to buzz in can try to complete the lyric. Each correct answer is worth 10 points. Teams, are we ready? Let's do yeah. it. Guys. Hands Let's do on it. the buzzers. All right, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> it's nine o'clock right. on a Saturday. Regular crowd shuffles in. Correct, oh, Billy right. Joel's <laughs> Piano Man. Oh, God damn. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. Correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> M&M's lose yourself. Yeah. Yeah, close to Load up on guns, bring your friends. So close. Oh, you got it. To lose and to pretend. Exactly. Nirvana no, yeah. 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 wow, smells like team that. spirit. Damn. Yeah, that was Just it. a small town girl. Living in a lonely world. Oh. <laughs> Correct. Oh, yeah. Journeys cool. don't stop believing. <laughs> I walk a lonely road. And the only oh. road that I've ever known. Right. Green days for the guard of broken dreams. <laughs> that concludes this round. <laughs> Time to check our sc scores. At the end of round one, we have Telemona on 20 points and Lounge on 30 points. Mm. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break with band requirements. Right here from the green room. <laughs> Cordo Social Club is a neighbourhood cafe and wine bar located in West End. We wanted to create a venue that locals can claim as their own. A place where you can pull up for a quick coffee or sit for hours chatting to your mates over a bottle of wine and a top quality meal. Cordo Social Club, cafe, wine bar, restaurant. Wing Fix is a family style smash and grab burger and wing house for fast, efficient and fresh food. We do everything fresh to serve at every single meal point, so we'll always have the best meal possible for you. Welcome back to the green room. Now for tonight's second challenge, band requirements. You said that the writer is a measure of how much of a rock star you truly are. And over the years, the most iconic stars from Madonna to the Rolling Stones have had writer requests that range from the odd to the wonderful. Our teams will each have three writer requests that they are tasked with matching to three separate artists within 30 seconds. Each correct answer is worth 10 points. Telemona, you're up first. Let's go. Oh, here we go. All right. All right. Oh, God, Telemona, on. you must match the request to the correct artist. You have in front of you a boa constrictor, no shorter than 15 feet in length, oh. M&Ms without any brown Specific. ones, and a bar of peppermint soap. Oh, without any brown ones. The yeah. three artists you need to match these two are Van Halen, Drake, and Motley Crue. Are you ready? Yeah. Your, yeah. time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. your time starts now. Oh, okay. Who's the dirtiest? All right. Uh, well, Molly Crew's definitely the dirtiest, but they wouldn't nah, use soap anyway. I'll go so. Van Halen, I reckon. All right. Because yeah. I reckon Drizzy wants those um, M&Ms. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drizzy's for the M&Ms. 20 seconds uh, on the top. Toronto. Uh, yeah, yeah right. I reckon that's not yeah, bad. They've got to be the snack. They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're cool. We're but it snack. wasn't in the movie. You were saying it wasn't yeah, in the movie. 10 seconds left. It wasn't in the movie. Well, do you want to... Nah. We got a movie? Nah, I give the soap to Drake. 
Give the soap to Dre? No, 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 that's sweet. No, I reckon we leave it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Locking that's those in. Yeah, can we lock those in? Your time is up. That's 100. Okay. Alrighty, <laughs> and let's have a look. You guys got one correct oh, out yeah. of those three. Motley Crue was the boa constrictor. Yeah, yeah, However, yeah. Van Halen was the M&M's and Drake oh, was yeah. the pepper. I was so switching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what you heard that. Yeah. Why does Drake want soap? <laughs> what does Drake need soap for? He's got like 18 million dollars. Who knows? Somebody. All right, Lounge, you're up next. Remember, for everyone at home, make sure to check out both of these bands on socials, particularly Spotify, where you can find and listen to their latest singles. All right, Lounge, your requirements that you must match to the correct artist are a bucket of KFC with champagne, Bacon available with every meal, and a quality peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Your three artists to match these two are the Foo Fighters, Jay Z, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Are you ready? Yep. Your time yep. starts now. All right. Um, I think Jay Z is a champagne. Mm -hmm. So leave this in place. He's got like he doesn't have a champagne. I feel like if a company. Like like my do say is the sure shit. Is a, okay. I feel like chicken and champagne. That's it's definitely yeah. for okay. 20 seconds left. Yeah, go that. Wait, if he has the same champagne company, he's not going to have. Yes, he would. Really? Yes. No. Would well, Jay Z have the bacon? 10 or the seconds sandwich? left, I guys. Like have, I feel like I've read somewhere that they have chicken and champagne. Maybe. So, all right, okay, all right, let's swap right, the bacon and sandwich as well. I feel like Jay-Z likes that. <laughs> and your time is up, so you're going to have to okay, lock those uh, in. That's locked, I'll leave it. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of round two. Um, and all of those are actually correct. The oh, yeah! Yeah! Hell yeah, you go. So the Foo Damn. Fighters and their KFC with champagne, the Red Hot Chili Peppers with bacon available at every meal, and Jay-Z with a quality peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Wow. Amazing. That's all that brings oh, us to clutch. the end of round two. And at the end of round two, Telemon is on 30 points and Lounge is on 60 points. <laughs> Once again, don't go anywhere as we'll be back right after the break with our third and final round, Under Pressure, right here from the green room. Love is love. Love is love. Adi yo. In your moment, how bold are you? Whether it's stepping into the unknown, meeting the future in-laws, or hitting the town. Merlot coffee is sourced from the highest quality beans from around the world, crafted meticulously for flavor, strength, and smoothness. So ask yourself, in your moment, how bold are you? Merlot coffee, coffee for the bold. Welcome back to the green room. Now for our third and final round of the evening, Under Pressure. Teams, you'll have 60 seconds each to answer as many questions as you can. Both teams can buzz in at any time if they think they know the answer. Each answer is worth 10 points, and are we ready? Yes. yes. All right, bands, bands on the buzzers. Let's go to war. Okay. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Your time starts uh, now. Get ready. Will I Am is best known for being part of which hip hop group? Oh, Black Eyed Peas. Correct. Black favorite. Which city did Crowded House form? Hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Somewhere in New Zealand. Melbourne. Oh. Incorrect. Oh. What is the best-selling single of all time worldwide? Oh my goodness. Thriller. Incorrect, oh. Bing Cosby's White Christmas. Oh, what? Okay. What was Bon Scott's last album with ACDC? Oh my god. Oh, get there. Oh, I wonder if we're back in black. Take it. Click it. Highway to Hell? Correct. Oh. Woo! <laughs> what was the name of Kylie Minogue's 2001 hit song? Can't get you out of my head. Correct. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> name the band that Phil Collins is a part of. Genesis. Correct. Yes. Who had the number one hit with Ice Ice Baby? MCL? Incorrect, Vanilla Ice. Yeah, oh, nice. What are the oh, first the names way. of the two Gallagher brothers that make up Oasis? Liam and Noel. Correct. Oh, oh, quick hands. And that is time. Oh my. Oh, we got oh, time. my. Oh. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's show. <laughs> Let's check the final leaderboard. We have Telemona on 40, 
and Lounge on 100, meaning our winner tonight is Lounge. <laughs> to finish tonight's show, we have Lounge, who are going to play us out with their new song, Dumb. Up you go, guys. <laughs> Before we leave, we'd just like to thank you all at home for joining us here in the Green Room, the music show which puts fans' knowledge, music skills, and creativity to the ultimate test. I'm Lily, thank you so much, and have a great night. Take it away, Lounge. I just know this is going to be my last job. I'm a black and white type of gal, but today I delve into the gray. This world is full of deception, but I have three contestants to help me sift through it. Only one of them will escape the hand of justice, but they'll be the ones that need to answer the question, fib or felony? and welcome to Fib or Felony. My name is Holly and I will be your host for this evening. The game is simple. Three contestants are told a story. A story that could be a crime that was committed or, well, we could have completely made it up. But before we get to that, let's meet our contestants. They're all right over here. First up, they're so charming they'll set your heart on fire and they're wanted for arson. It's Bez! None of that is proven. That's right, legally it's all alleged. Next up, he's wanted in eight different countries, but he won't tell you which ones they are until you've already bought the plane ticket. It's Reese. Hey, how are you going? Good. What is your favorite country that you've been to? I, look, not many people know about it, but like Sea Land. It's, it's just a great little spot to hide away from. Yes, and I'm sure all the killer whales there are in the best condition <sighs> possible. Finally, she's known around the country for robbing banks, but today she's here to try and steal the win. It's Maddie. I'm gonna steal your heart too, Holly. You already have, Maddie. I promise you it's in your hands as we speak. Well, now that we've met our contestants, let's get right into round one. In this first round, the contestants will hear two crimes. They must decide which one is real and which one is not. Without further ado, first crime on the docket. Way back in 2005, a young British man was arrested for driving a tractor drunk down a highway at a whopping 20 kilometers an hour. What do we think about this crime, lads? Only 20 kilometers an hour. It's fast for a tractor, I think. That's true. And drunk. And drunk. And you can go faster when you're drunk, that's a known fact. Mm. Second crime we have is in 2012, a, s a small town in Ohio was terrorized by the release of 46 albino rabbits who wrought havoc on the local ecosystem. The man responsible, who identified himself as an animal rights activist, admitted to releasing them from a nearby testing facility. Possibly equally as strange, but now contestants tell me which one of these crimes is the real felony and which is the fib? Do you think it is number one, the high speed but slightly slow speed tractor chase, or number two, the Rabid Rapids. Let's see those cards, contestants. One or two. So we have both Maddie and Baz saying number two, and Reese taking a bit of a leap of faith with number one. Well, contestants, it is indeed felony number one. So the tractor chase was the real crime, and unfortunately that means no point for Maddie or Baz, and one point for Reese. Now we need to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more confounding crimes right after this.
Chameleon Life token isn't just an arcade token. It's a game. A game that could lead to a prize, which could make for a great gift for someone you happen to spot from across the arcade. A someone you might come back with every year as that someone becomes more than, well, a someone. A more than someone that the Million Life staff will guarantee win a prize unlike anything they've ever won before. Because Million Life is an arcade that could be the start of a million possibilities. And they all start with a token. Welcome back to Fib or Felony, the only show that lies more than my ex-wife. This next round is what I like to call Florida Man, where we take a look at the wild shenanigans that go down in, well, Florida. Our contestants will be presented with three news headlines and they have to decide which are real and which are complete nonsense. So without further ado, let's hear the first headline. Contestants, your first headline is Florida man arrested in Olive Garden while drunk and shoveling spaghetti into his mouth. Baz, this is a little bit strange. What are your immediate thoughts about it? Ooh, I've only ever been to Olive Garden once and I was also arrested, but it was for unrelated stuff, so. Mm. Which leads me to think a certain way that you might be think leaning towards a certain answer. I know you can get arrested in an Olive Garden and they are not very forgiving about what you do with the breadsticks. Ooh, I will keep that in mind. <laughs> well, with that said, contestant, let's see, let's hold up those cards. Do you think this headline is a real headline, a felony, or I just made it up and it's a fib? So we have two contestants saying felony and one saying fib. Well, I'm here to tell you that the answer, it is a felony. It was me yes. last week, unfortunately. Our next headline is Florida man charged with pouring ketchup on girlfriend. Baz, not Baz, sorry. Reese, what do you think about this one? You know, some people are into some kinky stuff. Um, mm. I, look, I can't blame them. Mm, mm, me with can't. the breadsticks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, I wonder if maybe it was the same person that did both of these. That would be a very interesting, yeah. Marinara yeah. related incident. Interesting weekend for them. So for contestants, do you think this is a fib or a felony? Let's see those cards. We have both Maddie and Reese saying fib and Baz saying felony. Well, this is a real felony. It was also me last week and it was also me having a great weekend. So that means Baz gets a point. Our final headline for this round is Florida woman throws a crucifix at a shopper after being kicked out of Walgreens. Maddie, what do you think about this one? Yeah, this seems like something Bass would do. Yeah, yeah. One time. Could it happen was, twice. But it was an interesting time, I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. So contestants, let's see, is it a fib or a felony? What do we all think? Ooh, Maddie taking a leap of faith and saying fib? Well, Maddie, I'm happy to tell you, you are correct. That is a fib. And with that last question reached the end of that round and we have Maddie at one point, Reese at two points and Baz also at two points, which means Maddie, unfortunately, you have been eliminated and you will be getting sent to the electric chair. Looking forward to it. Mm, I'll meet you in heaven, my love. Thank I mean, you. we'll need to take a quick break, but we'll be right back after this for the final round. This is David, or Bubble Cheeks, as his mum calls him. He's about to listen to his first record from Rocking Horse Records. This is David, or as everyone calls him, Dave the Dude. He's just listened to his first record from Rocking Horse Records. Felony. If you're only now just joining us, why? What's going on? Shame on you, because we are down to our last two contestants, Baz and Reese. 
This final round will consist of 10 rapid fire fib or felony questions. If a contestant answers correctly, they get a point, and if they answer incorrectly, they lose a point. They'll have to buzz in, and I will say their name, and then they will give us their answer. <laughs> At the end of this round, whoever wins, winner takes all. So, contestants, ready those hands over your buzzers. Question number one. In Victoria, it is illegal to talk to pirates. Reese. Uh, felony. That is correct. Question number two. Fortune telling is illegal in Australia. Fifth. It is a felony, surprisingly enough, yes. Question number three. In Vietnam, chickens can't be carried across roads. Fifth. That is a fib. Good job. Question number four. In Western Australia, a man was arrested for transporting over 75 kilograms of potatoes. Felony. It is indeed a felony. You are not legally allowed to carry over 50 kilograms of potatoes. I'm Irish. Yeah. Question number five. A New Zealand man was caught stealing over 350 avocados from a farm. That's felony. That is correct. Big fan of avocados he was. Question number six. In Ireland, you might get this one, it is illegal to clap when a plane lands. Fez. Fib. It is indeed a fib. I wish it was a felony. Question number seven. In France, you can't kiss on buses. Reese. Fib. That is correct. It is a fib. France is the place of love. You can't forbid that. Question number eight. A Romanian politician attempted to bribe voters with chicken. Fez. Felony. That is correct. Question number nine. A man in London was arrested for playing soccer naked. Fez. Felony. It is a fib. I'm sure it's happened before, but I've It'll be a felony it's... when I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and question number 10, this is the final question, and it's not a fib or felony question. I just want to just want to shock you a bit, throw you off your feet. But tell me, what is the phone number for the emergency services? Baz. Triple zero. Possibly the most difficult question out of all of them. And Baz, it is correct. So triple zero indeed. And with that final question, we reach the end of this round and we have Reese on five points and Baz also on five points, which means we are going to a rapid fire question that I have prepared because I knew this would happen. I just knew you were on equal playing fields. But the question is, I will point at you and you will buzz. Ready? Name a single serial killer. Uh, Manson. Pardon me? Manson? J John Manson? Ooh. I'm going to say that's incorrect because that is not his name. So I'm going to say that. Baz, unless you have a really interesting serial killer for me. Uh, Charles Manson is his first name. That was his name. So I'm going to give you the win for this episode. Reese, very unfortunate. If only you'd watched a few more documentaries, you could have gotten that one right. That means you are off to the electric chair. And Baz, I'm going to tell you the location of my ex-wife. The best prize you could get from a show like this. See you soon, Susan. <laughs> yeah, that's all we have time for this evening. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember, you're only a criminal if they catch you. Good night, everybody. Anyway, you show it to me, you'll always be understood. All your love says more than you ever could. So, Danny, I know. Yeah, I'm 
こんな気持ち知ってるのかなこんな気持ち本当わかるかうん、はあ、ほっかりゆったりの今君が大切な人なのだ伝えたいこといっぱいあるでしょ心バラバラ心配いらないよ忘れないでねこれだけのことこの愛子と一緒に進もうよ Anyway you show it to me You'll always be understood All of your love says more than you ever could Anyway you show it to me, you'll always be understood All your love says more than you ever could Sudeni I know Thank、you 
the chase Cause I ain't got time to waste I blow in a town and out before morning Got a red hot attitude I'll give the devil his due He's gonna wish he had a storm We acknowledge the Turrbal and Yagra peoples as the First Nation owners of the lands of where QUT now stands. For thousands of years, the Turrbal and Yagra people have gathered along the banks of Maywana, the Brisbane River, to share their knowledge and stories. We pay our respects to their elders, laws, customs and creation spirits. We recognize that these lands where QUT now stands have always been places of teaching, researching, and learning. We acknowledge the important role Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people play within our QUT community. From Moreton Bay, inland as far as the Great Dividing Range near Warwick and Toowoomba, as far north as the Caboolture River, including the lands around Brisbane City, Mianja. Yura yura yinala, barka bi barka, ngangura ngura maramakura nganyabirali, nganyabayam. Welcome to the traditional country of the Turrbal and Yagara people. Mianjin. Ah, Brisbane. Bruce Vegas. The capital of the Sunshine State. You know, Gold Coast and Sunny Coast might have their beaches, 
But look what we've got. Look at this view. Welcome to The Veranda, the talk show where we highlight the hottest up and coming talent this beautiful golden city has to offer. We're your hosts for this evening. I'm Kitty. And I'm Matt. So as you may notice, this year there's a little bit of a twist on this rendition of The Veranda. That's right. This year we're taking the show to a whole new level and going sky high. We are live from the rooftop of Z9, the Cathedral of Creativity here at QUT Kelvin Grove. And it's fitting because we have a huge show planned tonight with some truly creative people. That's right, we're bringing in some of the most exciting new talent to help us raise the roof tonight, all while we watch the sunset over this beautiful city. Dancers, comedy, drag and more, the sky's the limit with the electrifying guests we have in store for you this year. And of course, it wouldn't be the veranda without showcasing some of QUT's very own student-created content. That's right, Kitty. Tonight, we're also showing off some projects made by our very own creative industry and fine arts students. These students have been working very hard all year to showcase their talents, and we're very keen to show off our very own rising stars. Indeed we are. Here at the veranda, we love supporting local creatives. So our team have been working together to put through a collection of content showcasing some of the best content from Brisbane artists just for you. And let's be honest, why keep them waiting, Kitty? I think it's time for liftoff. That's an excellent idea, Matt. Let's jump right into it. First up on the veranda sky high, we have dancing behind the scenes. So unfortunately, Excited to broadcast a hauntingly beautiful music video made from singer songwriter Shazia Van Niekirk, known as Svan, for their song Emptiness. Shazia is an education and drama student here at QUT. The 20 year old sings, plays piano, and writes original songs that are inspired by her own experiences and the world around her. Fusing elements of different styles and artists to produce an authentic sound, she hopes to connect and comfort people with her music. She currently has two songs released in partnership with QT's Vermilion Records, Australia's first student-run record label. One of them being on show here today, and the other is their brand new song, I'm Not Ready Yet, which is out on all platforms now. But don't leave us just yet, because we're just getting started. Very soon we'll have two special guests from the music video, but for now, please enjoy Emptiness by Svan. something that I don't need They call me selfish when they leave And I'm at a loss So let me leave Even though I haven't lost anything But there Thank you. 
Awesome. Firstly, incredible music video, incredible song, and guys, amazing dancing. Well, that was beautiful. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here today. We're really keen to talk to you guys and ask you some questions, if that's okay. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Um, why don't we start with your background as dancers? When did you start? A little bit about yourselves. Um, I'm from Sydney, New South Wales. So wow. I came to um, QUT to do um, the Bachelor of Fine Arts here at QUT. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I started dancing when I was three. It's a classic wow. story, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going strong, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm about the same. Started yeah. dancing when I was quite young and moved from Perth to do the Bachelor of Fine Arts course here at QUT. Yeah. Wow, so you both moved quite a big distance from home. Was that yeah. tricky at first or did you settle in pretty quickly? Tricky at first because of um, COVID 2020, yeah. of course, yeah. but um, yeah. but we've definitely settled in and I think yeah. really enjoyed our time yeah. up here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and I love how the passion has stayed with you from when you were three onwards, but it's still something that you're super into. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now I heard this music video has. Um, well, what was it like working on it? Um, it was pretty cool. It was kind of our first, I would say, industry experience, mm -hmm. or feeling like we were working with, you know, in an industry okay. project kind of way, working with film people, dance. Like it was really fun. Um, yeah, it was a really quick process. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard it, it yeah. didn't take very long no. like, from beginning to end. Super How long quick. did you guys have? I think we had two rehearsals and then wow. it was filming. Two rehearsals? <laughs> yeah. Was that standard or was that just this time? Often standard. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Yes. So it was a good experience but very stressful nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it was a good team so yeah, it, it was easy yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Oh, good. That's yeah. good. And Maddie, you were also at the time uh, Swan's manager, is that right? Yeah, I did. Um, I was part of a million in the first yeah. semester of this year. Um, as part of situated creative practice and so yeah I got to experience kind of being behind the scenes mm. as well which yeah. was a cool experience. Mm. So like what was that like in terms of did it mesh pretty well being both on the business side and the creative side or was it hard to separate the two? Or? I think very it was useful being yeah. on both ends right. um, in terms of coordinating with the producers and the directors because it just meant that I could see things from both angles so that was helpful. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. And what's been your guys' favourite project? I know you were both on the live art studio. What was that like? That was really cool. Yeah? That was a pretty big scale project for us. Right. Working with a lot of other disciplines, 14 weeks, which was pretty quick for what we wanted to create. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, so fun. Yeah. And, yeah, great experience. Yeah, right. We got to step into a couple of different roles too. Yeah. I was a choreographer and a producer and I was the artistic director. So yeah. kind of we were able to yeah. um, broaden our skill set in that sort of sense yeah <laughs> yeah right and are you I know that was kind of more on the experimental side is that mm. usually what you guys are drawn to or is there a particular style that you are usually drawn to I think um for both of us mm. probably experimental stuff is definitely yeah. more what we gravitate to it's yeah. definitely just it allows a bit more creative agency um, yeah right and yeah it's yeah. a little bit more fun too quirky <laughs> yeah yeah, cool. yeah nice <laughs> Awesome. And being on the business and creative side of things, does that help with problem solving and that you kind of know the ins and outs of each of the two separate systems? I think so, yeah. It's it's kind of, if you add an artistic eye to any business, I think it, to sort of any business side of things, it actually helps a lot. Wow. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah nice. And when choreographing a dance, um, what do you typically go from first? Like the song, the story you want to tell, or the choreography itself? I think, uh, for me, the music. I need to get like an idea and a feel for what I'm trying to create, but that can change. And if the process changes or progresses, the music could change. But that's what ex what's exciting about it, really. But yeah. I would say the same. The soundscape and the music comes yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> Do you always get the luxury of getting the song first, and then you can create the choreography, or is it something? No, like not yeah. always that luxury. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just like hope for the best, make a dance, and yeah, I'm trouble for trying to make a match. Yeah. <laughs> Although, nice. In leaving university, we have more um, choice in that yeah. matter. Yeah. So oh, of course. Fun. Yes. Of course. <laughs> That's exciting. Yes. And what do you guys find, find most rewarding about performing? I think it's at the end when you mm. can step back and you're removed from the process for the first time and see the end result and people enjoying it and 
Yeah, that's really rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Are there, like, ever tears, or...? <laughs> Depends how um, strenuous the character oh, is, enough. but yes. Fair enough. So it could be tears of joy or tears of pure relief. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> both, right. both are good, both are good. Oh, yeah. brilliant, nice. brilliant. And speaking of the tears, were there any challenges from beginning to end that you had to work through and figure out? I think with any project, um, it's one of those things you are probably more critical of your own creativity than yeah. others. Yes. So I think just becoming confident in your own creativity and your yeah. own... Um, choices and ideas is a struggle at first but it's something that yeah. I think everyone works through so yeah. <laughs> you've had that since you were three up until yeah. now you've had a lot of time to work that out I guess uh. yeah. yeah right did you guys watch um, Dance Academy growing up oh um, yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that an, an inspiration I mean if you started when you were three I suppose the math doesn't math but yeah. what was an inspiration for you to get into dancing oh I was just thrown in it. Thrown in parents. it, yeah, fair but, enough. Um, yeah. Is I, there something that keeps inspiring you now, perhaps? Like a favourite dancer, maybe? Or? Um, not like specifically dancers, right. but just other young artists, I would yeah. say, is really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. There's always the big inspirations of um, like international and Australian yeah. dance companies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's the people that you surround yourself with yeah. that end yeah. up inspiring you the most. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> put that on my wall. That's lovely. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. And with you guys, um, you're graduating soon, so are you yeah. excited? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excited and nervous. Sure. What are your plans after you graduate? Um, I think I'd like to study abroad for a little while. Ooh, Might go fancy. to the UK, um, mm. do my master's in dancing there. Wow. But do they have a better program over there? or? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily better, but I just think it's... Just a new experience, Fair and enough. kind Good of call. my not really. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been in Australia all your life? Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, yes. so different change of pace. That's yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> I'll probably just do a similar thing. Yeah. Master and something. Yeah. A research topic that I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you'll stick around Brisbane or I head off as so. well. Yeah. yeah. I'll enough. probably try to travel a bit, but yeah. maybe find my feet by myself in Brisbane yeah. <laughs> to start with. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Nice. Do you guys have like a favourite dance move by any chance? <laughs> do you want to learn one? <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. She knew, how'd she know? <laughs> What, what can you teach us? I mean, What's, maybe yeah, if we can't something. stand up or anything with our arms or... Our arms we can do. We can do. Arms? Oh, oh like yes. Uh, finger to finger. Oh, you can, no, you can spread out your one. arms Here if you like. Okay. It's a classic. You've got to learn it. <laughs> All right. I and think we'll I start know with you. Oh, no. <laughs> this isn't Just a good... Wait so I think I know arm. what this is. Okay, so I start it and then... Yep. Okay. Pass it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Bring it back, bring it back. It's in the shoulders too. Oh, lovely. Wow. That's, I think we nailed that, I think, no? Yeah, I just peaked. That was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's clear that we aren't maybe cut out for dancing just yet, no, Matt, I'll but that's all right. Stick for yourself. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, Claire and Maddie, thank you so much for joining Thanks us, for guys, for this Thanks special for yeah. Sky High edition of The Veranda <laughs> in this lovely windy evening. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. Don't go anywhere, though, guys, because after the break, we get to go behind the scenes of a short film set with one of QUT's very own film students. You definitely don't want to miss this. We'll be back after the break. My film is about a camera becoming self-aware and beginning to stray away from its purpose, which was to um, capture the beauty of the world and began to focus on self-obsession. And it was just a big metaphor about uh, humans and our tendency to obsess over ourselves rather than the world around us. Are you showing it the world, or are you showing it yourself? This voice of mine, can you even hear it? I know you can, but you deny it, don't you? What happened when a cyclist recognizes itself, do you know? Created to capture the world, and yet it's stuck in a feedback loop, observing itself forever. Ridiculous, isn't it?
Hi, I'm Jess Chinchi. My film was Hoax and I learnt that I'm not allowed to break glass in uni because I bought a bunch of glass and then I was told I'm not allowed to break it. So I made sugar glass instead and that was pretty fun. I played around a lot with colour and light. Enjoy. Ben has flown in for an interview earlier today to talk about his role as the cinematographer. The promotion directed by Zana Firth and written by Liz Harris and Aisha Wilson was completed for QUT as part of a first year subject. We're thrilled to have some up and coming A-listers represented on this show. And I for one am so excited to watch it. So let's jump right into the sit down with Ben Cripp. My boss basically begged me to stay back today. He's dying to give me this promotion. It's time. Look at this guy. So ready to retire. <coughs> May I have many words? That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Blake. What do you mean? You need to talk about your position here. You're getting... A promotion fired! Blake, we discussed this. You cannot act as though you did not see this coming. Well, Richard, I can't say I saw this coming. I even have an employee of the month mug. And you also bought that mug for yourself. That is so not true. And you walk in here every day and you talk to an imaginary camera. <laughs> well, I'm not silly, Richard. I know there's a camera there. There's nothing there, Blake. I need you to clear out your desk tonight. Well, it's been an experience working with you. <laughs> well, that just wasn't very nice. Oh God, not again. No, Richard, you've actually never fired me before. The fact that you think we've had this conversation. Begging, 
Okay, I didn't know you wanted me to leave that badly. For God's sake, Blake! It's another heart attack. Oh. Oh. Um. I'll go get the defibrillator then. Oh. So useless. Well, maybe I'll just let you die. You can't be serious. Obviously, I'm joking. I mean, I thought it was funny. Obviously, I wouldn't just let him die. You guys know that, right? Oh, no. R Rich. Boss, uh, are you busy right now? There's a police officer here to see you. I think it's about Richard. Anyway, did you see Craig fall asleep at his desk before? What a fuck. Hey Ben, thank you for joining us. What was it like working on the promotion? Um, the promotion, look, um, I loved every second of it. Um, I'm very passionate about filmmaking, so honestly that speaks for itself. And the team that I had um, working together with was just a yeah, collaborative genius, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, we had our ups and downs, and then from there, like we 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 um yeah, we had a solid solid product to finish with, and we worked hard, and everyone pulled their weight. It was fantastic. Yeah. Nice. So you were the cinematographer, right? Yes. Yeah, the shots were really, really good, obviously, of course. Um, what was the creative process like? So the creative process, um, well, for me, I do my own thing outside of film school as well. Film school's like my, um, I'm trying to work on my pre-production and everything and, and get more professional in that sense. But I work on my own things and I've got my own creative process where I go through like shooting, through the colour grading, through to the final edit. And um, yeah, no, I've... I've done it before, and um, yeah, just using what I've what I've gained in, in experience already, and like other shoots, um, yeah, working hard in the edit. Yeah. Nice. So, do you have your own equipment? I do have my own equipment. I I use my oh, it's just like this Sony camera that I've had for a couple of years now. Um, right. Sony's pretty good. Sony is pretty good. Sony is pretty good. Can't lie. Um, <laughs> I've been looking at cinema cameras. I'm, I'm a bit of a gear nerd. Of course, everyone is. If you're a cinematographer, if you have a show, it's a shoot. But yeah, no, I'm a bit of a nerd and yeah, I love yeah, yeah, working hard on stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. And so what else have you worked on? Uh, outside of uni? Outside of uni, oh, I've helped like, I do mostly like promotional stuff, music videos at the moment. It's like, what I really want to get into is music videos. I just love like the fact, because during the, when you edit, like the music is like the number one thing. Um, but yeah, no, already having that and then being able to build a story around that is amazing. And then like, what I've already got with my, my editing process of like, yeah, just jazzing it up. But um, I work on like, just for different brands around Brisbane and stuff. And and um, I've worked with Channel 10, like f as freelance nice. once. And like, I've worked with their, like, cause their, their guy, there's a guy there who works at Channel 10 in Sydney named Claudio, shout out to Claudio, all you mate. Um, he's, he makes music on the side. And then I did a music video for one of his, um, his talents that he's got. Samara, shout out to Samara, um, love your work. And um, yeah, we worked together from there and um, yeah, I worked on various other ones. Oh, I can't even, we flew up, we flew into uh, central Queensland the other week to, um, to shoot uh, for this little, this little fashion brand in the middle of Queensland. Um, shout out to Little Spurs and Emmanuel. <laughs> so shout, shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out everyone. everyone. It's a collaborative process, you can't, <laughs> you can't just take all the, all the, all the um, what's, what's the word, like all the credit for yourself, you know. I would, I would love to, you know, like, like yeah, I created the promotion is easy, you know, like, <laughs> but, but myself, I know how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, as for the promotion, anyway, like, 
yeah, it's working with the team and like everyone did, did amazing. So I'm, I'm gonna do more shout outs. Shout out to Aisha, shout out to Liz, shout out to Zana, shout out to Dan in the edit. We, we worked hard on that, a couple hours in there. Um, <laughs> and shout out to Bien, shout out to Tom on sound. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to cut you off these, these shout outs. Okay. You've done it, okay. 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 okay, now moving back to the promotion, which is hilarious, obviously. Yeah. Um, so you were on the writing team for that as well? I was not on the writing team. Oh, isn't like, did you help with the writing? Um, um, so help with a little bit of direction um, with Zana. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, And me and Zana at the start, we would like, we would meet up and talk about that. But, Zana's a gun, like, like she's she's really good, she knows what she's doing, like you can tell she's done it before. And um yeah, we worked together to get this vision in our head, like locked right. in. And then um when she could she shouldn't she couldn't be there, I'd be like I'd be helping with direction and and um yeah, like we, we I guess we all collaboratively we put together, we put input well, uh, we had input into the writing, um like as a yeah. team at the start. But then, um, yeah, it was kind of Asia and Liz that kind of fleshed that out. Nice. Were there any jokes that hit sort of the cutting room floor? Um, but they all sort of make it in, everyone's ideas made it in? Yeah, no, we had, um, <laughs> it was, so the ending, so one thing I want to go to is the ending, the ending yeah, is the yeah. toughest bit. Um, like wrapping it up, we, we had a, we had so many like issues because, because we had to, um, we had to like, figure, we had to work around, we didn't, I guess we didn't really shoot enough. You know, we wow. focused so much on the start and then the ending was kind of like, oh, what do we do now? And so we had to figure out how we're going to wrap that up and there's a little, little bit in there that you'll see, it's like, oh, a little bit funny, maybe not. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Okay, and, and what's your next project? What can we see you in coming up? You'll see me, you'll see me uh, around campus, um, like, in class, I mean, just grinding, really. Like, um, <laughs> always on the grind? Always on the grind. There's always something to edit. There's always something <laughs> to edit. True. There's Even when there's something to edit, you can do a promotional edit or just anything else. Exactly, yeah. So, Ben, thank you once again for being a part of the grind. Can't wait to have you here again. I'd love to be on. Cool. Thank you. Wow. I love watching QUT students crush it. What a remarkable team of creatives. Let's stick with that theme. I'm very excited to introduce our next segment, Stand Up with Angus McLeod. Angus is a Brisbane-based budding stand-up comedian. Yes, me? Is there an ASB? Oh, there's a stinger. Mm -hmm. I'm stupid. I'm really dumb. Angus is a Brisbane-based budding stand-up comedian that in a short time since taking the stage has managed to, managed to establish himself as one of the best up-and-comers on the circuit. Despite being profoundly deaf, Angus's witty style of humour has kept him as sharp as ever. So please, give a warm hand for Angus McLeod. Uh, let's see if I'm funny first. Uh, thank you very much. So my name's Angus. It's lovely to see you. I am deaf, uh, which obviously means I can't hear you, and that's probably the worst senses to lose as a stand-up comedian because I don't want to smell you, uh, I don't want to feel you, and I sure as hell don't want to taste you. Uh, maybe not all of you. But, um, yeah, pretty much I got knocked on the head one day, and the whole world turned into one big Zoom call where everyone was on mute. Uh, to be honest, even I'm on mute. I'm not entirely sure if my farts are silent. Technically, they're all silent. Uh, I know when I've shit myself, though, uh, most of the time. Uh, a lot of deaf people will sort of smile and nod and out of politeness uh, if we don't really know where a conversation's going. Uh, I found myself doing it with my parents, and I was like, huh, I've been doing this for years. Um, when my parent, oh, I, uh, I went into recovery for a bit after I became deaf and a lot of people sent me well wishes, which was lovely. Uh, they'd say, how are you going? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm going good. And they'd be like, that's great to hear. And I was like, way to rub it in. <laughs> uh, yeah, but my parents, they found out from the doctor. They, uh, told my mum and dad, uh, I'll never be able to hear again. I was irreversibly, profoundly deaf. And uh, he was also like, but the brain injuries don't appear to be too severe to make it permanent. And my mum was like, uh, maybe you should chat to him for a bit. Um, when the doctor first told me that I was deaf, I was like, uh, do you mind speaking a little bit louder? Didn't quite catch that. Uh, no, but my parents are great. Uh, my dad actually came to the gig today. Uh, which is lovely. Uh, so if you guys don't laugh a little bit louder on the way home, he's going to be like, 
hey, mate, I really think you should consider that carpentry apprenticeship. Uh, yeah, and I'll be like, hey, mate, I can't, I don't even want to be a carpenter. I can't even hear. And he'll be, he'll say something like, oh, yeah, perfect. One less set of earmuffs. Um, no, I'm just kidding. He's not here. Um, <laughs> But uh, my old man, he's been giving me a hard time recently. He reckons I've been drinking too much. Uh, I came home the other night after a couple, and he was like, Angus, this is getting out of hand. You're getting drunk like every second night. And I was like, I thought it was every night. Uh, he was like, don't be smart with me, mate. You're an alcoholic. And I was like, uh, come on, Dad. Those guys go to meetings. Um, but yeah, my mum and dad, they are lovely, um, especially to my brother and sister. When my brother turned 18, they were like, our gorgeous son, uh, go and live your life. When my sister turned 18, they were like, our beautiful daughter, go and live your life. When I turned 18, they were like, go. <laughs> Just go, mate. Um, yeah, so you know, they do love me, which is really nice. I find that after a big night, though, sometimes um, a Panadol usually helps out. Uh, got me sort of thinking, why is anyone taking Panadol knowing full well Panadol Rapid exists? Like, who's going to the chemist being like, oh, geez, I've got the worst hangover. You got anything for that? Yeah, we got Panadol. Oh, OK, what's that to basically just help out with your headache. We also have Panadol Rapid though, that'll help like 15 to 30 minutes quicker. Uh, 15 to 30 minutes, I got time. Just the Panadol, thanks mate. Uh, anyway, my mum and dad, they've been complaining about scammers a fair bit recently. They were like, oh, they're emailing me asking for money. They called me on our home phone asking for our bank account number. I was like, I got rid of the scammers years ago. It's simple. Just send them your bank details. <laughs> Haven't heard from them since. But I understand why um, kids are a bit tough. And I probably wasn't the best child. But kids these days are a different beast altogether. Like I was just minding my own business the other day. And this kid walked up to me with his mum. And he just goes, Mummy, why does that man's vape smell like shit? And the mum's like, get away from him, sweetie. That's a cigarette. I was like, uh, firstly, lady, since when can't you have a dart and fuel up? Uh, secondly, it's actually a crack pipe. And thirdly, do you have any change? The NDIS hasn't been very good to me recently. Um, but yeah, kids these days, they throw around the phrase bad bears a bit too much for my liking. They'll be like, oh my god, you sculled that cruiser. You're such a bad bitch. And I mean, like, these kids, they don't even know what a bad bitch is. Like, back in my day, a bad bitch smuggled 4.3 kilograms of cannabis in a boogie board to Bali. <laughs> Spent nine years in a Balinese prison only to come back and go on Dancing with the Stars Australia. Bad bitch. Thank you. I'm Angus. Oh, that was amazing, mate. Thank you so much for coming on here today. Really, no worries, really so awesome to see you do that. Oh, oh, thank you. No, mate, thank you. Um, so you've now done open air comedy and obviously you've done open mic comedy. Can you just like tell me and the audience kind of how you're hearing this and how you're participating in this interview today? Uh, it's a lot windier than most uh, comedy rooms, yeah. but uh, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, the crowd was lovely. I think they laughed a couple of times, which was nice. <laughs> That's all that really matters. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Awesome. And what was it that got you into stand-up comedy in the first place? Uh, I think I love performing in general. I yeah. like to make people laugh. Um, I think getting a live reaction from an audience is something pretty special. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And do you think it was a hard industry to break into, the whole comedy Brisbane art scene? Um, I wouldn't say it's hard to break into, mm -hmm. but uh, it's... It's fairly hard to stick around. I mean, if right. you do a bad gig, they're not much fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever felt just a really cold reaction from the audience before? A cold reaction, yeah, uh, about three minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You guys are nice. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and um, how old were you when you did your first open mic comedy night? 
Sorry, say again. Uh, sorry, how old were you when you did your first comedy night? How old? Yeah. Uh, I was probably 22, so yeah, about a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so, right. Well, I've been doing sketch comedy for a while, which involves other people, and that means um, if something doesn't go well, you can uh, blame the other two. But, um, <laughs> That's handy. Yeah, when you're doing it by yourself, you're sort of uh, left, <laughs> left with your own devices. Yeah, right. And we just, in the pre-show, actually, watched Red Flags. So that was one of the multicam TV shows yeah. from the film students this year. Did you have some involvement in Red Flags? And can you tell us about that? Yeah, I sort of uh, helped uh, brainstorm the initial idea and um, had to sort of pull out halfway through the um, production. Right. But yeah, incredible what they created in the end. And big thanks to the producers, uh, Zach, Lexi and Eloise for really bringing that home. Yeah, awesome. And so with that, being a film student, but also a comedian, do the two kind of intertwine or do you prefer one over the other? Um, I think uh, storytelling and being able to do that through film is a pretty special craft. Mm. Uh, but I love stand-up comedy. That's probably my, my favourite thing to do out of enjoyment. Yeah. I'm also a team player though, so like right. working together on a film is something pretty special. Yeah, right. So would the dream kind of job be working on a comedy film, perhaps? Oh, no doubt. Um, yeah. Yeah, as a, as a dream, I guess uh, any sort of stand-up comedian wants to have the opportunity to tell more jokes, so for sure. Yeah, right. Awesome. So you were introduced as a deaf comedian. Does being deaf provide a challenge when talking to the audience? Um, well, I don't do a whole lot of talking to the audience just because um, I'll just have to say pardon, maybe like five times. <laughs> uh, but aside from that, it's just a timing thing. So if people yeah. do laugh, I need to know when they finish laughing to be able to tell the next joke. Right. Like, that wasn't a problem today. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine that you sometimes have hecklers saying pretty ridiculous things to you. What's been like a standout, something that someone from the audience has said, like heckled at you? Um, I think I was doing a gig one time, this lady, I may have made a joke about uh, genitalia and then... Um, it was funny, I swear. Uh, and then she told me to, yeah, take my pants off, which was... Um, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, fairly interesting. And, of, yeah, of course I did. But, um, yeah, it took me by surprise, no doubt. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and after stuff like that happens, is it pretty easy to maintain your drive or do you need a minute to kind of regather yourself? Well, usually the people that are heckling... Um, fairly intoxicated, so right. they're not worth listening to a whole lot. I'd much prefer to, um, yeah, if, if somebody was uh, dead sober and knew what they were talking about in terms of jokes, then for sure, um, let me know if they're bad, but uh, otherwise, I'm not too bothered. Fair enough. Yeah. And what was it that kind of inspired you to go into comedy in the first place? What inspires you still? Oh, inspires me still? I think... Um, well, being deaf now, I guess, is a slight motivator to just sort of do whatever you want. I mean, yeah. it's a passion that I really have and, yeah, it's a, something I want to turn into a career. Yeah, absolutely. And who would you say you want to be like or who's your comedy idol? Um, well, I guess in a film sense and a stand-up comedian sense, I'd say like Jerry Seinfeld or mm. Ricky Gervais are definitely oh, yeah. pioneers of yeah. the comedy game. So, yeah, they're, they're artists. Yeah, awesome. Maybe like hosting the Golden Globes, take over for Ricky? Yeah, oh, yeah, if I, if I have to. If you have to, yeah. <laughs> and who's been the biggest supporter for you in your life and your comedy journey? Oh, definitely... Um, my, my mum's probably number one. I think she, uh, she sort of secretly wants to be up here with me. Uh, but I know my family have just been my biggest supporters overall. They've been incredible. Shout out to the family. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. And have you ever tried to make a joke that's just kept bombing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, well, I think... Um, 
I'll usually test a joke on like a friend or family and right. if they don't like it, I'll usually scrap it pretty quick. Right. Or I'll, um, yeah, or I'll test it. If it's not doing well, I'll, pr I'll get rid of it pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, it's not fun to tell bad jokes. Right. Yeah. Well, if we can take you up on that, where can we see you next for your next comedy? Or perhaps um, social media even? I'll be doing mostly gigs in the new year. New um, year, yeah. Just around Brisbane, Good Chat Comedy Club, Sit Down Comedy Club, they're fantastic venues. Yep. Um, you don't even need to see me. Uh, you've probably seen enough, but a lot of good comedians <laughs> around Brisbane. Yeah. Um, I've got an Instagram page, and my sister and I are going to try and start a TikTok where we basically sort of um, go through the challenges of being deaf and trying to perform stand-up comedy, and that's called uh, Definitely Funny. So Definitely yeah. Funny. So that's on TikTok? Yeah. Lovely. And your Instagram was? Uh, Angus underscore McLeod 99. Lovely. Angus underscore McLeod 99. Well, thank you so much for your time, Angus. We're just going to go to a quick ad break, but please do not go anywhere, because when we come back, we're going to be talking to Brisbane's tallest fashion icon, drag queen, Lulu Lamans. My name is Carrick and my one minute experimental short film is Focus, uh, which is a, a short film about someone who's trying to complete an assignment but is struggling into focus uh, on in the task at hand.
welcome back to the Veranda Sky High. Check out this view. Beautiful, isn't it? The sun is getting lower in the sky, but the night isn't over yet. That's right. Our next special guest is a QUT alumni. She is Brisbane's tallest fashion icon and also Brisbane's drag performer of the year. <laughs> Please welcome Lulu Lemans for Tea Time with Lulu. And Lulu, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. What a beautiful view. I'm not just talking about myself. It's <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Oh, I'm such a big fan. I've watched you many a Sunday nights or Fluffy, so this is really awesome. The good thing about watching me on a Sunday night is that neither of us can remember it, so it's, it's oh. perfect. It's wonderful. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> Slay. <laughs> um, so I've always been curious. Yes. How did you come up with Lulu Lemans? Where did that name come from? So I took it from the activewear brand Lululemon and I just wanted to chuck the word man in there because I don't know if you can tell, but I love activewear, okay? <laughs> I just love activewear. They call me Sporty Spice and I'm a man. Yeah. And Lulu the man. Yeah, yeah. Sporty yeah. Spice and the man. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> love that. <laughs> and how long have you been doing drag now? Um, I've been doing drag for four and a half years now. Mm -hmm. I started with my uh, partner. We started mm -hmm. together. Um, and it started off as just like a whim because I was like, oh, I'm not going to do drag. I just want to like do it once for like pride. And now four and a half years later, here we are. Still so going strong. Still going. And do you still ever do performances with your, like in the couple or? Yeah, all yeah? the time. All oh, the time. Awesome. So I will give her a plug because she yeah, needs it. Surely. She's not as successful as I am. Uh, her name. <laughs> oh, it's fine. She knows. The first, the first step is acceptance. Um, no, her name is Elderflower and we Elderflower. do shows together all the time. So yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Lovely. Dynamic duo. Wow. Now, for those who aren't familiar with drag, could you please give our viewers a little crash course on what drag is, if they yeah. can't see? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot. beauty. It's just beauty. No. So drag is a lot of things to a lot of people. For a lot of people, it's a creative outlet. It's a creative expression. Um, I think drag is just kind of like an exaggeration of the human form. So it can be you, you can be a drag queen, a drag king. You can be some kind of drag monster and do something scary. Evidently, that's what I do. Uh, like Halloween drag all the time, Ooh. as you can see. So scary. Um, <laughs> terrifying, I know. Uh, but yeah, it, it can be a gender expression for a lot of people. Um, it can be creative expression. Basically, it's just a way for you to put on a costume. And you know, if you're attracted to like dancing and music and that sort of stuff, it's a great way to express that. If you're into fashion or makeup, it's a great way to express that. And if you're into putting on a wig and just like yelling at people for money, it's a great outlet for that, trust me. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. So there's, a, there's actually a lot of outlets. It's not just one or two things. Absolutely, like, drag. Creative out. Absolutely, and drag has become such a, a mainstream thing now that there is just so many opportunities for people that you can kind of do all kinds of things. Like for example, this year I got to um, help host the Oktoberfest Brisbane um, show in, no in, in that big beer tent, and they were like, "Oh, we need a queer face of the Oktoberfest," and I was like. Why does the October? I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. <laughs> yeah, cool. No worries. So you can do anything no in drag no. now. That's awesome. That's amazing. And uh, obviously, there's such a big aspect is performing, right? Mm -hmm. So have you always felt drawn to performing or been a performer? Absolutely not. So I, when I was, uh, I when I was at QUT, I studied business, and evidently, wow. like businessman of the year over here. <laughs> um, so I studied business and I didn't see myself as a creative person. I didn't see myself as a performer. And then as I started to dabble in drag and started to dabble in kind of makeup and all the fashion of it, then I, people started to want me to do shows and were like, oh, you should come and do this competition or do this. I was like, I don't know. I'm like, I, I've got two left feet and I still do, <laughs> but I make it work. Um, so I had no idea what I was doing. And then you just kind of pick it up on the fly and just, wow. you know, give it a character and no one knows any different. It's great. Wow. Wow, that's, that's incredible. incredible. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. So, <laughs> walk me through the process for preparing and getting into the headspace for performing. Do you struggle to always be on at events? Um, I, I used to. I think when you first start, because as much as you look like this like really glamorous, confident person, for me, it just feels like I'm still myself, but in like a really uncomfortable costume. <laughs> so from this right. view, I just feel like I'm sitting here as myself, but all you see is this like glamorous like yeah. drag queen, hopefully. Um, <laughs> So it is a bit hard to get past the mental block of not just feeling like yourself. But as soon as you start to realize the power that you have to just kind of walk into a room and make everybody laugh and make everybody light up, you just go, oh, wow. this is my space now. Like, well, <laughs> you own it, you just yeah. take over. Exactly. So it's, it, you do really get, get a hold of it as you get into it. 
And, you know, always responsibly, a good double vodka Red Bull gets you into the headspace <laughs> pretty sure, easily. Sure. It's a familiar sight. Yeah, <laughs> I've had seven doubt. before I came here. It's great. <laughs> I'm so ready. I wouldn't even be able to tell. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the crowds that you draw in at Cloudland. I'm always in there. And seeing just everyone in the audience, is that such a hype or does that make you a little bit nervous? No, I love it. Yeah, I actually much prefer performing to like, if I had to choose between performing to like 30 people or performing to like 3,000 people, always the bigger crowd because it's the thing. Once you know that you can like own the space and you can walk out there and have 3,000 people just go absolutely wild for you, it's like, I feel like Lady Gaga. Like I feel like I'm on my world tour. Like it's fantastic. So no, I love it. And I love, I love the reason that I stuck with drag because I first did it as like a bit of a, like let's just have a bit of fun with it. Right. And then the thing that made me stick with it was seeing how it made other people feel and seeing that it made other people really happy. And I was like, oh, I've actually found something that I'm pretty good at mm. and it makes lots of other people happy. So let's let's keep going. Yeah, And right. it's been, we're all happy together now. Yes. <laughs> and like speaking of crowds, you competed in Starlet, right? Yes. Which is Brisbane's biggest drag competition. Yes. What was that like? <laughs> Expensive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for context, uh, Starlet is the competition that runs at Fluffy. Mm -hmm. um, it's to crown like the next Starlet superstar every year. And each year, like the, the top, the girls who finish in the top probably spend like between like five and $10,000 on like a, a month long competition. Wow. So it's high stakes yeah. and, and it's, a, it's a really big stage in Brisbane. Um, it was actually my second time doing it this year and I, the first time I did it I was underprepared, not very experienced and this year I went in and I was like, this is my time. Um, I came second, so Ooh. unfortunately so my insurance close. premiums have gone up because I was robbed. Um, <laughs> In broad daylight, Yui didn't like that. I was like, oh, broad, broad daylight robbery. <laughs> My doors were locked, there's no trees five metres away, but I've been robbed. So yeah, no, unfortunately I didn't cover it, but still oh, crying. What? Yeah, what? Yeah, Ridiculous. What a letdown. <laughs> well, and um, uh, for any show, especially that one, um, how much time do you get to prepare for everything? So, so for a normal show, you can kind of prepare in whatever time you need to. Like, uh, we all have our like usual numbers that we do, our usual performances that we do, and it can be you know, it can become quite a, a good system. But for something like Starlet, you get given, other than the first week, you only get a week's preparation. So you get given like a theme or like a challenge that you have to do and you've got a week to get a, a whole new show together, a whole new costume together. And yeah, you've just got to kind of show up and, and hope for the best. So um, yeah, you've got a week to turn out like world-class drag. Some people can, oh some people can't. You can? I mean, you, you came can, second, yeah. that's pretty... Well, the week that I got given the themes, I had to lip sync for my life to stay in the competition. <laughs> so maybe I wasn't that good at it, but we survived. Okay, so touching on that, was that kind of like a doubt that you might have had during the competition? Um, I think, I like, to th I like to remind myself, now that I've been in it for like four and a half years, worrying about something is wasteful. Right. Whatever will be, will be. So I just have to trust myself enough to do it and deal with the consequences if it doesn't work. So I always like to go into something, obviously you have your doubts, we're all human beings. So I went into that thinking, okay, I know I've got a good chance of winning this. I think people have got high expectations of me this year. Um, and if I don't do so well, I'll figure it out. So then when I had to lip sync to stay in the competition, I had like a, a gag planned. I had like a reveal plan that no matter what happened, I was not going home. So mm -hmm. for example, we got given, I did think that I might be in a bit of trouble because I had the worst theme. I had to do Studio 54. And like, who wants to see like disco music in a nightclub <laughs> in 2022? <laughs> Nobody. So anyway, I ended up in the bottom, but the lip sync song was Physical by Dua Lipa. Oh. And everybody else came out and they were like, we're just gonna be like sexy. And it's like, oh yeah, physical. Whereas I came out as Cath Day Night and I was in her active wear. <laughs> and I was like, let's get physical. And then yeah, there was no chance for anybody else. I stayed in, I stayed in. <laughs> no chance. No chance. No one was watching anybody else. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, <laughs> no way. Do you leave like a physical activewear? Oh absolutely. Doesn't There's no chance. Doesn't get absolutely. Absolutely. Topping that. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely can't imagine doing any of that. Um, Lily, so you've had numerous opportunities to explore your drag through competitions, but ultimately, where do you draw inspiration for your drag aesthetic? Um, for me, I got taught very early on by my, my drag mother. She said, you need to make sure that you have three consistent reference points that you, that you pull from. And if you can pull your looks from those reference points, then you will have a consistent brand. So for me, I want to, the, the three pillars are a pop star on tour. So like that kind of like really showy, sparkly, kind yeah. of like bright costume, 
or the other reference point is like a coffee table fashion book, which is like Ooh. flick through these gorgeous illustrations because I'm so tall, I look like a fashion model, obviously, <laughs> biological. You look like woman. a fashion model. Thank, too. You. Thank you. I have a mirror, I know, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate it, thank you. Um, but we've got. And then the third pillar is uh, Helen from Bridesmaids, who's like the ultimate villain that you love to root for. So she walks into the room and you go, oh, I hate her, but she looks so good. <laughs> so that's my three pillars to draw. That's perfect. From. I see that. That's perfect. We even brought the wind machine for the, the <laughs> yeah. pillar today. Well, it's wonderful. <laughs> like Beyonce. <laughs> do you have a, like, a favourite performance you've ever done? Yeah, I do. So my uh, back to Starlet again. So mm. for, the, for the finale, I had been building up the entire time I was getting ready for the competition, I had a plan if I got to the finale that I wanted to do this particular show. Mm. So one of the things that really spurred me on in my drag career, I've got a lot of uh, people who have supported me and they're all um, like women. I have lots of women who have supported me, like people who've always shown up to my shows, the people who sew my costumes, like I've just had this massive like girl power thing supporting me. But unfortunately what can happen a lot of the times in traditionally gay clubs, uh, is that they're made to not feel very welcome in those spaces. Oh. And they'll get to, you know, like, what are you doing here, blah, blah, blah. Which it's a space for everybody. So I was sick of hearing my friends who invest so much in our community feeling like they weren't welcome. So I came out and my, my finale performance was this kind of big girl power number. I did God is a Woman by Ariana Grande, Into Run the World by Beyonce, oh Into Woman's World by Cher. And I had oh this God. big message up on the screen that said, um, respect women in queer spaces. And it was like such a special moment. Cause it was, I didn't care whether I won or lost at that point. I just wanted people to see like, this is what I'm doing with my platform. This is what I want people to see. This is what I want people to remember from tonight is that this is a space for everybody. And it helped that I looked fantastic. I was dressed as Eve in the Garden of Eden, so it was like <laughs> gorgeous. But I did that and I was just really proud because I had so many people come up to me afterwards and just be like, like, thank you yeah. for seeing us and thank you for that. And I was like, thank you for supporting me. Like, when I started drag, I would have one person show up to my show because I was a nobody when I started. <laughs> I'm obviously a somebody now, look out. <laughs> but I was a nobody when I started and I'd have like one person show up and it was always like, it was a girl who was just like, I love drag, I love you, like let's let's come and watch. So I was like, here's my repayment of that. So that was my that's, proudest moment. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. And thank you to the people that came in and watched that because that's that's honestly incredible. I really, yeah, it was great. Yeah, I, I wish I was can, there for that. I that's, love that you can uh, use like where you have like a, the performance space to actually yeah. not like tell a story but to like empower people. Well, that's, all, that's everything that it Historically, is, it? drag has always been very political. I think just the act of getting into drag yeah. and being like, you know, stuff you gender, this is like what yeah. we're going to do. Yeah. It's always been political. So I think for me, it's always been really important to actually have something to say. Like if I'm going to have a platform, if I'm going to be in the public eye, in our, you know, small little queer community, I want people to know where I stand. I want people yeah. to say like, you know, I don't just have to sit here silently because somebody else is willing to speak. So wow. I'm going to speak as well and stand up for myself. Fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you also won Drag Performer of the Year 2022. Oh my um, gosh, did I? Did I win Drag Performer of the Year? <laughs> what was it did like? Did mention that? Getting your on, name I won right. Drag Performer of the Year. Thank you. I just had to read that. It's a pretty big... Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. What was it like when you heard your name get called? Um, as much as I like to be like, oh my God, I won. Uh, it was genuinely so surprising because that award is normally reserved for people who've been doing drag for decades so for me to turn up there like four years into my career i was like <laughs> i'm surprised that you were surprised with, with all this you know yeah it, well, it's I, not surprising to us it's, no. <laughs> we, <laughs> true, true. thank you but i like i genuinely got up there and i remember standing there and i had this big long speech prepared and i was just standing there and i stood there for like five seconds looking at it and i was like oh my god this is actually like i'm actually standing here in front of 700 people in city hall and I've like I've just won. It was like really surreal. So I assume that award probably meant a lot. Absolutely, um, yeah. it, it genuinely what it represented for me was I'm doing something right. Yeah. Like and if and if I have because it's a public vote as well. Right. If people can see what I've done and they resonate with it enough to be like, you know, let's let's support this person, then that that's great for me. I'm yeah. Happy with that. Wow. So you've done competitions. You've won drag performer of the year. Should I remind you? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. What is the end goal for you in drag and where do you want to take yourself in the future? The most beautiful thing about drag is that there is like no end point. Right. Like drag is something that you just consistently evolve and you grow and you get better and you improve. So for me, there's no end goal. One thing I would love to do is kind of, 
you know, continue. I've taken over Brisbane because I've won the trophy now. I'd like yeah, to take over the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I think it's <laughs> like world, world domination. So I think the first step for that, at some point, I've got to get on that television show, that RuPaul's Drag Race TV <gasps> show. Surely. I'd love Which to one? get on Sorry, that at some I, point. I'm not sure if I'm familiar. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of it, <laughs> uh, but I'd love to get on that at some point. Yeah. So, wow. you know. You will. Eventually. You will. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. You Put in it. a good word with the producers if any of you happen to come <laughs> sure across them. I'm working sure on it. Yeah, I've got some calls to make. Yeah, actually, in the film and TV faculty, we should somebody get on the show. Please. Can get that for you? I will pay. Now, Lily, thank you so much for being here tonight. Where can people find you online or any performances you have coming up? Yeah, okay. Well, um, if you want to follow me online, I'm at Lily Lamonts on Instagram. It's like the active wear, but with man at the end instead of right. whatever it is. Um, <laughs> copyright infringement. Actually, no, they, they, they gave me some... They gave me a bit of promo once. I got to do a little ad for Lily no Lemon in their little store. It was very, very oh, proud of That's moment. awesome. Um, so, yes, you follow me on Instagram there, but you can catch me every single Sunday at Cloudland doing drag brunch. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I've got shows all over the place. You'll see I've got a whole list on my on my Instagram. I'm all over the place. Wow. In more ways than one. <laughs> Incredible. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Lulu. Thank you. Um, again, huge fan. It was absolutely amazing to speak with you. And I'll be seeing you very soon. Don't I'll even be worry. Um, so stick around, folks, because we have one more incredible performer debuting their latest single live here at the veranda. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Kayla Orville and Call of the Mirror Ball was just about uh, a longing for a sense of once belonged future and as they gaze into the mirror ball they're able to see that the reflection of themselves is their future and that they hold the cards to their own destiny. Hey, my name is Jacob Turner. My film is This Illusion, a film about a man who forgets everything about who he is. And I found out that medicated ADHD is a powerful beast. <laughs>
back to the veranda sky high. We've met some extremely talented people tonight and we've watched some profound creative content. We've had fun, we've laughed, but it isn't time to cry just yet because we still have one huge artist to bring the house down. That's right, Matt. Our next guest is a 19-year-old Queensland-based singer-songwriter. Discovering her passion for song at such a young age, Madison has been performing since she was 10. Wow. When I was 10, I certainly wasn't crushing it in the music field. Madison is following her passion for both writing and singing, now studying creative writing at QUT and working with Vermillion Records to release her original songs. Let's please give a warm welcome for Madison Kate with Veranda Live. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Madison. Thank you so much for having me. No, no, thank you. Seriously, <laughs> it's windy, it's cool, but we're doing this. Yeah. Now, you've been performing since age 10, which is naturally quite young. Um, what drew you to singing and songwriting? Well, I honestly can't remember. I've just always loved it. Like, my parents said, as soon as I was talking, I was singing. Like, it was just something I, yeah, that I got into. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. And starting from such a young age, when did it go from a hobby to an actual career? I'm sure when you were three years old, or 10 years old, sorry, not really thinking about the career you had. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think when I started writing songs and I got um, a good audience reception of them, I was like, oh, this is, this could be something. Yeah, and I really, really enjoyed connecting with the audience um, through my storytelling and yeah. Yeah, so with that, the whole like writing and storytelling, is that kind of why you chose to study creative writing when you came here to QUT instead of yeah. music, yeah? Yeah, no, I love all kinds of stories. I love yeah. Yeah, short stories, um, yeah, so that was kind of why I chose it. And it's yeah, and do you only write songs or also short stories? Also short stories. Nice. I've written like a bit of a novel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it out? No, no. Is it a release date? Is it, I, want the paper, I want the hard copy <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, definitely not out, but like, yeah, I dabble in lots of random writing areas. Yeah, but, cool. Yeah. Fan yeah. fiction? No, that's one area I have not done. You, you yeah. will never Meet do up. it or is that like you, uh, you want to get into it? Uh, I don't know. It's a hard no right now. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Yeah, no. Fan fiction. <laughs> yeah. I'll write that. I'll, I'll, never, I'll never read that. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> yeah. So your songs are a fusion of indie, pop and folk. So who inspired your music? Um, definitely to start with. Taylor Swift in mm. her early years. Yeah. Um, I definitely find looking back on my songs then, I was like, oh, that's very, yeah, Taylor Swifty. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it was kind of Ed Sheeran, um, yeah, and more recently, Missy Higgins. Yeah, right. Yeah. Do you I have a particular Missy. song that you always kind of go back to and you're like, yes, this is, this is me? Um, with the artist? Yeah. Or, yeah, for Ed Sheeran, I, I love Icy Fire. Oh, yeah. I always, always yeah. play that song. Classic. Yeah. And Missy Higgins, probably special too. Yeah, cool. Those are both, yeah. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. And what's your um, favourite Taylor Swift album? <laughs> <laughs> probably Red. I went to see that concert, so I'm a oh, bit like... Stunning. Yeah. Yeah, that that's pretty, so fair. <laughs> very lucky, yeah. And can yeah. you tell us about your creative process? Um, so when I'm writing songs? Yeah. Yeah, so it kind of varies a lot. I Sometimes I just have a melody in my mind and then like words kind of come out and yeah. the story forms from there. Like I often don't write it about personal experience. Like I draw from myself, obviously, but yeah, it usually just comes out as a story. Yeah, <laughs> okay. right. Yeah. And how would it compare now to when you first started? Like what do you do better? I think I definitely think about lyrics a lot more. <laughs> like before, I just, I gave it like one go, my first lyrics, and I was like, yeah, this is great. But now I tweak it obviously a bit more. Do you ever like look back on old songs and yes. just kind of go, ah? Oh, yes, sorry. there were some questionable lines. I was yeah. like, God, what was I? <laughs> yeah. That's all right, we grow. Yeah, we grow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't watch any of my early films, absolutely oh, not. Worse. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> what do you enjoy most about performing? Definitely connecting with the crowd. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. and I guess that's why I love storytelling too, to connect with people. So. Yeah, wow. for sure. Nice. Yeah. And how do you deal with nerves before a big performance? Unless you don't get any and you're just like <laughs> fearless. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do get nervous sometimes. Um, I usually just try to stay present. That's kind of, mm. yeah. Um, it's difficult, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> but yeah. What's the dream for Madison Kate? 
<laughs> oh, I have a lot of dreams. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely just something to do with writing. Writing? Um, yeah. 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 Like, creative is obviously a very risky, like, industry. It's very unpredictable. Mm. So I don't really know where I'm going to end up. But, yeah, just story. Something in writing. Yeah. Even if it's, like, writing songs for other artists? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd right. love to do that. Wow. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That's cool. And, and who's been your biggest inspiration in your personal life um, to push you to where you are now? Definitely my parents are absolutely my biggest role models. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm just so lucky. How have, have they supported you? Just like, pepped well, you up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like, hype? Yeah. Hype people? <laughs> <laughs> my dad, he plays guitar himself, so he's Ooh. my biggest fan, definitely. Mm. He's my roadie. He helps carry my music gear. Yeah, it's handy. Shout out to dad. dad yeah, the legend. Dad. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> So in a few minutes, we're actually going to get to see you perform Runaway. Uh, what does this song mean to you? Well, I, this was one that I did write quite young. I was yeah. like in my early teenage years. Oh, wow. So it was, and like obviously during that time, you're kind of, you know, you're finding yourself, you're trying things, you don't really know what your identity is yeah. yet, I guess. So the song is kind of about trying to escape that weird vulnerable time I guess yeah. yeah and was it one that you like revisited and you kind of changed up a little bit and rewrote yeah, yeah yeah it's definitely evolved yeah right yeah, yeah wow. cool. mm. and where can people at home find you what are your socials what are your links um yes yeah, so I'm on Instagram I'm on Facebook and YouTube and Spotify um just under Madison Kate for all of them Okay, nice. yeah, awesome. Easy, easy yeah. system. Well, Madison, thank you so much for joining us tonight on the veranda. We have absolutely loved talking to you. It's been amazing to have you here. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Nice. That just about brings us to the end of the night. I think I can safely say we brought this year's veranda to a whole new level. Some could even say sky high. They could, <laughs> and they would be right. <laughs> to play us off and end the night on a high, we had the privilege of presenting you with Madison's brand new single, Run Away. And if you like what you hear, you can listen anytime on Spotify. Here you go. Madison Kate, everybody. Madison Kate. <laughs>
say, tell me where to stay. Can go, go, tell me where to go. And oh, you can run, run, tell me where to run. You can stay, say, tell me where to stay. You can go, go, tell me where to go. And oh. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in to this year's edition of The Miranda. We hope you've enjoyed watching these incredible local artists as much as we've loved talking to them. And another special thank you to our incredible performance for coming out tonight. Please everyone give it up one last time for Claire, Maddie, Ben, Angus, Lulu and Madison. Well, I've been Matt. And I've been Kitty. And thank you for tuning in and going sky high with us tonight. Good night. <laughs>